In this video, we discuss modes of heat transfer. We will discuss three mechanisms by which heat can be transferred, conduction, convection, and radiation. And in this video, we focus on the first one, conduction. So let's say that you have a pan and a candle that is warming up water in the pan. The handle of the pan is hot, uh, but it's not in contact with the flame. And so there is a heat transfer through the material. And we call this conduction. Now, how do we understand conduction? Uh, let's say that you have a rod of a material and we warm up one side. In the hot region, the atoms have uh, more kinetic energy, so they vibrate more uh, with a bigger amplitude. And so the atoms, uh, the atoms will uh, joystick their neighbors, so the neighbor, neighboring atoms will vibrate and joystick their next neighbor, and so on and so on. And so energy will move across the material. But the atoms don't move across the material. Right? They just oscillate around some equilibrium position uh, and they don't move uh, along the rod. But the energy of the atoms is being transferred. All materials conduct uh, heat like, like that, but uh, in metallic materials, there is an additional contribution. Metals conduct electricity uh, because they have electrons that are free to move. And those uh, free electrons can also carry energy from the hot region to the cold region. And this is a very efficient way to transfer heat. And so metals are good conductors of heat. Now, we already mentioned that metals feel uh, colder than wood, even if they are at the same temperature. Right? And this is because wood is an electrical insulator so it can only conduct heat from the vibration of its atoms from neighbor to neighbor. But a metal also has electrons that can conduct uh, heat faster. And so when you touch a piece of metal, or if you sit on a metal bench, the heat from your hands is conducted away very quickly, and so it feels cold. Now, in this demo, we will illustrate uh, that the thermal conductivity depends on the materials. I have a central disk and four rods that are attached to the disk. We have copper, steel, brass, and aluminum. Now I will turn on the gas and start the burner, and I will warm up the central, <coughs> sorry, the central disk using the burner. As the central disk gets hot, the heat will be conducted along the four rods, and at the end of the rods, there is a ball bearing that is attached with a small amount of wax. So as the heat is conducted along the rod, eventually the wax will melt and the ball bearing will drop. Now, while this is happening, let's describe the situation. So we have a hot zone, which is the central disk at a temperature TH, and the ball bearing, which is at room temperature, which is colder, labeled as TC. And the two zones are connected by the rod, and the heat will be transferred from the hot zone to the cold zone. And the rod has a section A and a length L. And we can write the heat current dQ over dt. It represents the flow of energy per second, and so it has uh, units of joule per second or watts. And the heat current will be equal to Ka times. Um, TH minus TC over L. In this equation, K is the coefficient of thermal conductivity, and it is a number in watts per meter per Kelvin. And delta T over L is the temperature gradient in uh, Kelvin per meter. For each material, the coefficient of thermal conductivity will be different. For example, for copper, it is 385 watts per meter per Kelvin, for steel, it is 50.2 watts per meter per Kelvin. For brass, it is 109 watts per meter per Kelvin. And for aluminum, it is 205 watts per meter per Kelvin. And so now let's come back to the demo. While I was speaking, the conduction of heat was taking place. And uh, you see, one of the ball bearings just dropped. It is the one that was attached to the copper rod. And uh, this is in fact expected because copper has the largest coefficient of thermal conductivity. So the heat current will be the largest 
that means that it will take less time to transfer energy to the colder end of the road. And so based on this, you can already guess uh, which one, which road will be the next ball, uh, which, ball will, which one will be the next ball bearing to drop. Right? Now in this table, um, you can see a few more values for the coefficient of thermal conductivity. You can see that metals in general have larger thermal conductivity than other solids. And this is because as we uh, mentioned earlier, electrons are free to move in metals and so they can transfer energy. But you can also see uh, from this table that gases have very low thermal conductivity. That means that gases will, be, uh, will conduct heat very slowly. And that is why, for example, fur is a good thermal insulator. It will trap air, uh, which has low thermal conductivity, and uh, styrofoam or fiberglass also are materials that trap air, and they have also very low thermal conductivity. Now, in water, uh, fur will not be as efficient because water conduct heat uh, much better than air, and so animals in water need to have uh, a lot of fat to get the same level of thermal insulation. For comparison, one centimeter of fur is equivalent to the same thermal insulation as six centimeters of fat. Another example um, is when you reach out to take something out of the oven. Right? Why can you put your hands but not touch anything? And this is because the thermal conductivity of air is very low. So the heat from the air does not flow rapidly to the air that is in contact to your, with your hand. Now, one more example, the uh, lower thermal conductivity of air also explains why when you uh, eat a pie that is uh, too hot, you can get burned by the filling, but not really by the crust. And this is because the filling has a larger density and uh, specific heat compared with the crust, and the filling also has a better thermal conductivity. And so all of these things combine to make more heat flow on your tongue uh, from the filling than from the crust. Now let's look again at, at our demo. The first ball bearing uh, to drop was the one attached to copper. And now you see the second one. It is the one that was attached to the aluminum rod. Again, it makes perfect sense since aluminum has the second largest coefficient of thermal conductivity after copper. Now at this point, you know that the next one will be brass, right? but we have to wait a little more. Right? So let me put this in a fast motion. And here you go. You see that the third one is brass. Now let's wait for the steel. Again, let's use the fast motion. Now here you see me when I realized that steel will take twice longer than brass. So 